This one dropped through the portal, through the gate, and fell through that to the planet, to the plane known as Midgard. This one immediately began to look for targets, wielding its staff, blasting anything that moved, using it both as a hand-to-hand -hand combat weapon as a ranged attack. If one of the things known as humans got close enough, this one would grab it with its hand and claw it and crush it. Let the juices within it seep across its claws. It raged through the city streets, up the sides of buildings, through windows, wreaking havoc and slaying anything that moved. But the hive mind quickly realized that there was a force more powerful than originally predicted. That wherein the hive mind had said this would be an easy victory, there was stiff and unexpected resistance. This one joined the resistance to them. Wave after wave moved towards the enemy, blasting at the oddly colored, dressed beings. They were more powerful than the humans. They, pr they uh, presented more resistance and, yes, more challenge. This one got as close as they could, got as close as it could possibly reach, and almost got to one when something happened, and the world went black. There was no time. There was just void. Then this one awoke. It stood, looked for its staff and found it, began to scan for a target, and then realized there was no link. There was no hive. There was just silence. There had never been silence before. Not once. Not ever. And this one didn't know what to do. It stood. And it feared. For the first time, it feared. And some deep instinct something built into its brain long before the gates, long before the machine augmentations. It told it to run, to hide, to seek shelter, to go down. So this one scanned around, moving quickly. There was still chaos everywhere, and there was a hole in the ground where an explosion had torn the surface open. And this one dove through it, quickly found itself in a tunnel where there was two metal rails on the ground, and it followed them into the darkness. This one's augmentations let it see, let it scan, and it could move quickly over wreckage around things until not only was it silent from the link, but there was no sound either. And it just moved. Eventually, it found offshoots, and offshoots from offshoots. And it found a passage covered with rubble, but its senses could tell there was something beyond it. So it clawed and it pulled, and it dragged things out of its way until it found a passage. And then it pushed things back until the passage was sealed. And this one now felt safer. This one remembered something deep, deep inside its brain that said this was a safe place to be out there in the light. Eventually, this one found itself in a hollow chamber 
with regular patterns on the wall made from some kind of smooth ceramic. This one liked the patterns. They were comfy. They once again triggered something deep in its mind. And this one sat down, wand in hand, and curled into a defensive position. It slept. When it woke naturally this time, it was feeling better. The machine augmentations had done some repairs, but it needed fuel. Its senses could tell that there were things moving around it. With the staff, it was easily able to seduce some of them with a very light blast, rendering them unconscious but not dead. It picked them up. They were small, half the size of its hand, covered in fur, the long, thin, skinny tail. But they were alive, and they were meat. And this one ate them. And something triggered in its head. For so long, this one had eaten nothing but nutrient blocks. But now it had fresh, living meat. It ate a dozen until it finally felt satiated. And then it began to move once again into the deeps, into the depths, into the tunnels. It found a water source and drank deeply and kept moving, scanning, sensing. And finally, its augmentations picked up movement, but this time they were larger, humanoid, or at least it thought they were human. It waited till three things moved into its senses. Two looked very similar to humans. The third, though, was much different. It had four arms and no legs, and two of the arms were very large. It walked on them. That was very strange. The other two were definitely more humanoid, but one was covered with fur like the furry things that it had eaten earlier that same period since it had woken. And the last had antennas, but no eyes. It got its staff ready. It pointed at the, at the people, at the things, at the humanoids. But this one didn't fire. There was no command from the hive. There was no direction, no order, no nothing. At the moment, this one felt no fear from these things. They grew closer until they noticed this one. They screamed out, but they didn't attack. They chittered at it, at this one, making rhythmic sounds. And this one replied with its own language something that it didn't use very often because the link had always been there. But now, it was silent. One of the things moved away, the one with no legs and four arms. The other two stayed. Didn't get any closer. But didn't go away. And chittered some more. Eventually, the four-armed one came back, and this time, there was a fourth with him. Or it. This one didn't really grasp the concepts of gender. And this was the strangest of all. Because it had the head and the torso of a human, but no arms and no legs. There was no fur on it at all. It was its skin was smooth and a deep floated in the air. And suddenly, there was a new link. The purple one said, Who are you? What is your name? And this one replied, I don't know. 
and this one froze. For never in his life had it ever uttered the concept of I, of a singular, of a separate entity from the hive. The purple one sensed this. The purple one said, I see you as an individual you stand before me alone and separate. I recognize you. I acknowledge you. I give you the name Franklin. This one stopped and thought for a minute. Franklin. I, Franklin. And here we have the first individual Chitari ever to exist within their species, or at least the only one on Earth. A Chitari separated from the hive mind, a creature half reptilian humanoid, half machine. The only possession, its armor and its staff. What will it be? Will it join the people that it just discovered? The Morlocks, the mutants that live beneath the streets of New York? Will it become an ally? Will it be a disinterested individual moving away on its own, making no connection with anyone? Will it become an enemy? Is it an anti-hero? Would some day come to realize what its species had done how its species had been made thrall to a godling. Will it want revenge? Will it want to free its people from the control of Loki and Thanos? Will it want to set them free? Will Franklin realize that its own species isn't something it can be a member of anymore? Now that it sees the world through the eyes of being an individual. So, what would you do with Franklin? How would you use it in a campaign? And is it the only one? Or is it just the newest anti-hero ready for a redemption arc? Because those that know me know how much I love a redemption arc.